on salvage hunters. <laughs> Drew's frustrated at the fairground. Guy, are you serious? Visit Scotland for a piece of Victorian history. <laughs> wow. A thousand? No. No? No. He digs underground in search of treasure. <laughs> Just massive spiders. And finds some heavyweight items in a boxer's backyard. That's about as big and heavy as it gets, I think. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, it gets even better. Wow, nice original frame, no rot. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Boom! What's in here? <laughs> now, that I would like to buy. He'll even venture abroad into uncharted territory. Scott, my family started this farm 1,200 years ago. 1,200 years ago? There's nothing he won't buy. <sighs> They're in great shape, aren't they? With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. It's the start of a new week at Drew Pritchard's base in North Wales. He's about to head out on the road in search of some new salvage for his shop. But with invitations to buy from a number of non-profit organisations, his buying trip is not going to be straightforward. One of the challenges this week is going to be buying from charitable causes. This can be a mixed blessing. You always feel you should give them too much money or pay a little bit too much for anything. But I'm in business, I'm here to make money, so I've got to find a middle ground for both of us. Nice to get out. Let you out once, once a year, date release. Today, he's taking Gavin, a restorer who's been working with Drew for over 10 years. They're heading to Lifton in Devon to chase up a lead that's got Drew quite excited. We are going to see a man called Guy Belshaw, Dingle's Heritage Centre. What we have here is the National Fairground collection and a lot of it are working exhibits, but I think Drew will be interested in some of the sort of sign work, some of the figurative stuff. But Drew's real interest is in the areas which are closed to the public, where salvage hunters can often find hidden treasures. What he's also got is overspill of the museum, and he's ready to sell. And the best news is, nobody's been over it yet. Hopefully there'll be something there of interest and he'll let us have it. I hope so. Done. Oh, it's big. It's huge. Hello. True. Guy. Welcome to Devon and the Fairground Museum. Nice to be nice here. To see you. Wow, look at this. This is incredible, Guy. As soon as I step into the building, there's stuff everywhere. I'm just like, I love that. I love that. I want that. I have to have that. And that reaction is it, it, something you don't get all the time. That's a beauty. What I like about fairground art is things like that which are just so odd. Well, it's a very surreal-looking figure, it's isn't it? Just... It's a sort of dolphin, a stylized dolphin. Look at the guy's got no hands, he's just got bulbs for hands. Yeah, he's a very spooky guy. Um, and it's... it features a lot of pop music videos, that thing. Come wow, look here. at this. This is incredible, guy. That's a beauty. I've not seen one with teeth. It's almost like a donkey. And there's the fact you've noticed all the heads are turning outwards as well to the yeah. left, which is yeah. British. Yeah. Because our, our gallopers go that way, yeah. clockwise, and the Americans go anti-clockwise. There you go. More useless information. <laughs> There's something I can't ignore over here. That big Dodgem banner. Well, yeah, that's superb, isn't it? As Dodgem tracks go, that was, you know, a superb example. Oh, it's so good. I absolutely love it. If there's something I could walk out of here today with, it's that. This is good. Would you ever consider selling anything like that? We, we wouldn't sell that particular one. Fairground art, and particularly these sort of the things that have got the racing cars, is so good. It's so cool. And every time I see a piece of it, I get genuinely excited about having it, and I, I want to buy it. Now, that I would like to buy. Yeah, it's a superb piece, isn't it? Is it for sale? It's not for sale, sadly. At any price? Well, possibly it's some price, but it's not uh, immediately for sale. There is a frustration here that I know that I'm in a museum and it's very unlikely I'm going to be able to buy anything. So it's sort of, I've got this whole, you know, good guy, bad guy going on because I'm thinking, I really, really want it because I want it. But then I'm thinking, well, it's in a museum, so it's in the right place. So I'm thinking, oh, I feel bad, but I have to ask. I can't not ask. I've got to try and buy it. It's an incredible... It's been a great museum tour and Guy has one more surprise in store for Drew. This is war. <laughs> 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 Woo!
Drew and Gavin are having a thoroughly enjoyable day at the Fairground Museum. But it's time to get down to business. <laughs> I, was, I was nine again then. Um, this is great fun, but we are here to buy something. Come this way, Drew. You've got plenty to see. Lots to show you. Guy leads Drew and Gavin out to the trailers, where the museum overspill has accumulated over several years. These trailers are rarely seen by the public, so it's fertile picking ground for a salvage hunter. The museum is just fabulous, but Guy has given the opportunity to go through some storage areas that have never been gone through before. There's a myriad of stuff in here, there's tons of stuff, and I cannot wait to get in here. Really privileged access. What about these, Guy? Shooting saloon. It's a shooting so, saloon? Yeah. I like those. Are these for sale if I just bought the letters? No, because it's a complete uh, it? joint. Initially, you could see, you know, Guy was like, oh, yeah, it's fine, jump in and have a look at those. So when we pulled those out, um, I, I clearly saw his face change, and you could see, he goes, oh, God, they're good. We'll take these out anyway. I can put these in the museum. Actually, they're hidden away. They're quite nice, aren't they? <sighs> that was the real bit I really wanted. As soon as he said I wanted them in the museum, I was like, OK, you know, game's up, that's it. But it's frustrating. It is frustrating. These, these panels here... These? They're interesting. 30s, 40s? Uh, 30s. What would you want for a panel if you, got, if you sold one? No, we, we couldn't sell those. You can't sell those? No. OK. Yeah, every time I'm pulling stuff out of here, I think it's reminding Guy what he's got in here and he doesn't, uh, doesn't want to sell it. it might be I, mean, those, I, think, I think he'll let those go. Are these for sale? Sadly, we can't sell those. It spells Moon Rocket, which is named one of our rides. So. Ah. Are these for sale, Guy? They're, they're for sale, yeah. How they're... much are they a panel? Um, they'll be 100 quid, something like that. It's all good looking, but at that sort of money, I can't make any money on it at all. Despite Drew's excitement about buying from the museum overspill, he's not off to a great start. It's beginning to look like he may have made the six-hour trip to Devon in vain. Never been in this one. There you go, straight away. What about that? Yeah, you could have that. That can go? Yeah. How much is that? I don't know what it is yet, but... Uh... Every. Yeah. Every. There's more. When I was pulling them all out, I was like, oh, you could read what it was. It's prize every time stall. They, they haven't got that oomph factor, but they've got something. 1930s fairground lettering like this, which is still on its original mounts, could sell for up to £450 in Drew's showroom. Do I love them enough, really? What do you want for them, for the lot? £300. Ooh, no. No, too much money. I have to be honest, there is a day minimum cleaning those, maybe two days in those. That's going to cost me another couple of hundred pounds at least, way probably more. I'm thinking, to be honest with you, 100 quid. Yeah. I just think that's what they're worth yeah. to me, because yeah. we're not going to be able to sell them. They're not fancy enough to sell no. a single letters. Yeah. So yeah. that's where I'm at with those. Yeah. yeah. Well, because we're the Fairground Hosts Trust, we have to be a bit careful. So 150, maybe. 50. I can see what Guy's trying to do here today. All the money that I give him today that's going to be ploughed back into the museum, which is wonderful. But I'm in this business to make some money, so I've got to buy it at the right price so I can make a decent profit at the end of it. Yep, yeah. 150. Okay. We'll take yeah. those. It's an icebreaker. I've bought one thing, broken the ice, so we can now move on and hopefully start getting some other sales going. Yeah. I think I'm so become, becoming, becoming slightly happy with those now. Yeah, you see? You've got what's left of this um, little Red Baron biplane. You could have that if you wanted. Uh, just chuck it out and I'll... Uh... It won't fly. I let it go. It's slightly heavier than I thought it was. Just trying to figure out whether just the tub is something I can sell, cos I want to get rid of all the modern stuff off it. So I'm just trying to look at just the body. What would you want for it? About £100. Pound. It's got to be worth that. There's some age in it. No, fair leave. enough. Something just went, no, leave it, and I always listen to that and go, no, leave it. It's got to have a few things going for it, and that's yeah. only got one thing going for it, so... Right. <laughs> There's quite a few bits missing, flightless. And it's not long before another potential treasure catches Drew's eye. Oh, blimey. Straight away. I'm seeing. Love them. Guy, these are great. Yeah, those are finger boxes from a shooting gallery. There's some age to them, though. They're, not, they're, um, they're I was going to say, these are sort of first quarter of the... 20th century, aren't they? I would think so, yeah. Looking yeah. at them. What would you want for them before I go pulling all these out? I mean, they are beaten to hell. But we'd still want a free figure sum for them, I would imagine. I just love these things. They're very, very unusual. Naively beautiful and simplistic, and ex incredibly happy if I could buy them. These are something that you're never going to see these again. Finger boxes are targets used in a shooting gallery. 
These 1920s ones are a unique find, handmade and possibly the only ones of their kind. Restored, they could be worth around £175 each. So, what do you want for them? Well, we've got to look at £100 each, haven't we? £100 each? Yeah. <gasps> Guy, are you serious? <laughs> um, I think I would go to... Um... The maximum I'm going to pay is £200 for the four. That's 50, it. £50 pounds 50 a quid piece. each, 50 because pounds that, that, is, that is it. That is it. Which they might seem cheap, but there's a bit of work, and there's quite, they're filthy. And I think one of them's... That one is... I think that's had it, that one. I think that one might be for parts to fix the other three, but we'll see. Well, shall we see a, a gesture of goodwill to the fairground heritage trust £60 each? No. No? No. <laughs> You're a hard man. No, I'm and a realist. We're still in a muddy field in Devon. <laughs> That's why I want to do the deal and get the hell out of here. All right. <laughs> 200 quid. You can buy the tea, then. You can buy the tea. I'll buy the tea. 200 quid. Come on. Thank you. Right. Let's take them. They're just charming. And that charming, naive beauty about them will sell them. And to have four over the moon. Very, very happy to buy them. These are heavier than you think. I've managed to buy some wonderful pieces and I'm now on their radar if something else comes up. So all in all, a great day. Hugely entertaining. Thank you. And uh, I learned loads. What have you done today? Well, uh, should we lie and not tell them we've been round on bumper cars? <laughs> what do you say? Oh, it's really tough. <laughs> today was like, oh, nose to the grindstone, seriously. Shame that he wouldn't let a bit more go, but that wasn't his decision, I suppose. You know what our customers are like, and they're going to love those items, aren't they? Yeah. I can't wait to see the price every time something cleaned. Six hours later, Drew and Gavin are back in North Wales, where the team is waiting to see what they've bought. <laughs> we went to a fantastic place, which I... Loved everything in there. Because uh, it's a museum, they can't sell a lot. But what we did get was this. It says, prize every time stall. It's good, isn't it? It's yes. good set dressing for a shop or something like that. The fairground lettering is an item that will work very well in a totally different place. So taking it from there and maybe putting it on the back wall of a clothes shop in a big old country house, you know, on, on a large landing, have it all there. Um, it's got a multitude of uses. It's funky and it's cool. It's different, it's interesting. It's got loads of really good wear and patina on it. But the wiring on the back is a thing of beauty. Look at the wiring on the back. It's nearly as good as the front. It's, it, there's something rather primitive and yeah. simple about it. And these ones are really interesting. Are they uh, gunshot ones? Yeah, but these have just been made by some bloke in a shed. When Drew got back this afternoon, um, he looked tired. I think they'd done an awful lot of miles. And the van didn't look as full as I'd hoped, but there were some very, very interesting pieces in there. Cool, huh? There's, there is not another set of these in the world. That's it. Because this guy clearly only made them for himself. That's the half the charm. If you just had one big white wall, one right in the middle, it's a statement piece that people can talk about. Excellent. It's a new day and a new salvage hunt for Drew Pritchard. He's back on the road, this time with T, an old friend, but a relative newcomer to the antique salvage world. Well, I think you could definitely call it rural. They're heading to Barhill in South Ayrshire, Scotland, home to a large Victorian estate, which Drew hopes will be filled with salvageable stock for his shop. Black Lockery House, is that where we're going, is Aye. it? Yeah. And what, what's there? We're going to see a lady called Caroline Goodall. We've been here for 10 years. We've been renovating the house. We've been absolute slaves to the house, um, but we're getting there. Black Clockery was built in 1904 as a weekend retreat for a wealthy Victorian family. Caroline and her husband bought the estate in 2004 and relocated from Yorkshire in the hope of restoring Black Clockery to its original status. The house has to pay for itself. So um, we've diversified and we have guests coming, staying here. Um, it's a big party house. The best thing about the whole place is nobody's been in there to buy anything. They've never sold anything. They've never had any dealers in there. Well, so there could be anything in there today. 
God, the flies up here. See, this is the problem, you see, is you can't kill flies with a sat-nav. <laughs> Get in with this. <laughs> Black Cloak Tree House, five miles. Okay. Five, five miles, miles up here? This, yeah. Are you kidding me? Oh, God. Well, we've not had any dealers in, no, because they never made it. No. Looks like a good place. Oh, yes. Right, this is why they bought a house here. <laughs> this is a rare opportunity, really, to get into one of these houses Hello. that's untouched. Hello. Hi, Caroline Drew. Yeah, yeah, pleased nice to, to meet you. you. I've got to say, the house is spectacular, isn't Thank it? Thank you. The first stop is the bathroom one of several rooms which retains its original Victorian fixtures. Ah, canopy baths. Yes. Every week at the shop we're offered old cast iron baths and, you know, we don't oh, want man. them unless they're something Please. special. This bath is something special. It's a late 19th century a canopy bath. It's built in, so it's a got a cabinet built around it. OK, so, waste in, water on. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. <laughs> you need an engineering degree. I have, degree. I have you need it a few on. times, yeah. And you can see all the sprays here coming out. <laughs> and then... Quite a feat of engineering, isn't it? It's is amazing that, yeah. the, the, you know... This would have been a serious luxury in the Victorian era to have that. That's like, you know, this is cutting-edge stuff going in there. You know, most people were still had outside toilets and he's got an indoor shower that's adjustable. What an amazing thing to have. <laughs> you're, you're not considering taking this out, are you? Um, yes. Some guests use it. Mm. Some look at it and think it's fabulous, but do I really want to get in it? <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a bit more of a, um, a business decision. Canopy baths were a popular feature with wealthy Victorians, incorporating both a bathtub and a shower cubicle. Reconditioned originals can sell for as much as £8,000 today. I would say if it was a freestanding one, yes, I'd be interested. Right. With a built-in, no. Right. Purely because of the work to get it out. That's a seriously heavy item. Yeah. We're probably looking at this has got to be half a ton tip. But my personal feeling is yeah. it's so unusual, yeah. and once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. And you're not going to get another one. Yeah. Okay yeah. then. I was hoping he want, would want to buy it, and it would give us a lot of money to put back into the house. But he's explained that the bath is a, a truly original feature, so perhaps it's best left here. I'll take you to the outbuildings now. Okay. We have things there that I think will interest you. All right. Are they covered in muck? He likes them especially. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop is the laundry building, where many of the estate's original features are still in situ. Limey. Wow. Yeah. This is interesting. Something, isn't it? But amazing how it's managed to survive right down to the irons. Nobody's ever touched it. No. Heat your irons up on there, and the heat from this dries them on that carousel thing. And then you pull them in and out on the racks. There, the sheets and everything on these. That's what you need—a fat lad. <laughs> <laughs> you need a fat Welshman to operate yeah, one of these, don't you? I'll tell you what they are. They're quite cool, actually. Do you know what you could use these for? What? Retail display. Have all this polished. Have all the wheels polished. Then it's a, that's a super piece of retail display. Very interesting thing. Very interesting. Um, just as I think financially, it's something we can't do. Have to remember where we are. They're too far out and they're not quite, there's not going to be any money left in them by the time we do it. So I just chat away to Caroline and say, what about, you know, when you convert the place, I'd keep those. You could have a roll in, roll out wardrobe for your guests. <laughs> Hang the clothes up, <laughs> pull them out. <laughs> it's still, it's better left where it is. Leave it alone, leave it where it is. But the whole place is just like a mechanism, it's a tool. Yeah. The entire building's a tool, isn't it? The factory, yeah. really, for, for your Lord's washing. Get your tickets out, ready for Tombola. <laughs> Get some ball up. <laughs> no expense spared. I mean, look at the yeah. built a building just to wash your pants and sheets. It's all magic to you, isn't it? Washing clothes and having things dried. <laughs> yeah, I'm not very, I'm not very domesticated. No. <laughs> no. I'm not very good at in, anything like that. To in far too many ways. Yeah, I, I can't do it. I can't look after myself. I can't cook, can't iron, can't wash. I can't, <laughs> do, I can't do anything. Fascinating building, but there's, there's nothing else in here for me I could buy. Right. So, again, nothing in there for me. You know, we're, we're here to buy. We're here. We've come a long way to look for authentic country house items, and there's nothing in there. But then Caroline says, well, would you like to look in the cellars of the house? And I, there's nowhere I'd rather be right now than looking in the cellar of this house. Into the dungeon. Into the dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Oh, great, it's much more my sort of place down here. Yeah. Oh, these, these are good. What are they? It's a lawn clock. I've never heard it's of a lawn It's a Victorian lawn clock. toy or party game or whatever. Right. And you push them into the lawn. 
yeah. in a circle, like a sundial, yeah. and you'd use the sun to have it on the lawn. Wow. Isn't it great? Yeah. It's an interesting piece of sort of social history. Really? They're lovely. I, I sold yeah. a sundial to a woman once in the shop, and uh, it was a very, very nice sundial. Yeah. And she turned around to me, and without a, a shadow of a lie, she turned around to me and says, what happens when the clocks change? <laughs> she did. Really. What does happen? I don't well, suppose you're bothered, do well, you? No, I just said step to the time. right. <laughs> 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 Are you going to keep I'm these? Hoping. Well, now you've told me what it is, of course, no, I'm feeling them. like... <laughs> yeah. Not for the first time this week, Drew has discovered something which the owner subsequently decides to keep. But he's not finished in the cellar yet. You always like a big sofa, don't you? I do like a big sofa. I could have a proper... Could have a proper lie down on that, couldn't you? Yeah. Full slob. Yeah. You could um, do roller polies on this. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like it's been a window seat in the house. Yeah. Somewhere. Yes, it was. So it is a whopper. It is. It is. That yeah. is a whopper, the which is, it is an issue. Yeah. They obviously yeah. like the lounge. They like the lounge. I mean, yeah. just look, um, you know, if I get up there, you get three people in here lounging about, couldn't you? <laughs> it's a huge sofa. It's exactly the thing you're looking for when you walk into an old country house like this. It's a thing of total quality, style, manufacture and era. It's all there laid out in front of you. This Victorian sofa is around 10 feet long and could sell for around £1,200. What do you want for it? As much as possible. OK, give us a ballpark figure. Where do you want to be? A thousand? <sighs> no. No? No. Um, no. Um, I've been having a similar problem all week. Um, this is a worthwhile cause and all the money that is raised is going to go back into the house. But I'm in business, I'm here to make some money, so it's finding that balance again between the charitable side of things and the business. How about... 550. Hmm. I'm thinking 550 is a bit cheap. OK. I think more... 800? Um, well, look, I'll tell you if I... Because I do want to buy it. I really yeah. do want to buy it. If I said 700, so I'll come up another 150. Right. 700 and I'll buy it. And we'll take it away. T will put it in the van. We're going to need a bigger van, though. <laughs> no, I'll go in the van. <laughs> I think... I think yes. 700? Yeah. 700, we'll take it... I'll have a deal. We'll take it away. Happy? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. And I thought, well, look, you're here. You've got the opportunity to buy it. Buy it. For £150, just buy it. Take it. Stop messing about. Get it in the back of the van. How are we going to get this out? Magic. Magic. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. It'll pay for a nice bit of restoration on the house, won't it? It will. Everything we're doing here pays for more that goes back into the house. Yeah. All in all, it was fair. You know, at the end of the day, he has work to do on it um, and he has to sell it. And we all do things to earn money somewhere. So it was fair. Look at that, see? Ow! Like a glove. But you've now got a camper van. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Pleasure. We enjoyed it. Yeah, it's and been have nice to meet you. Good luck with it. Yeah, mm. thank you. So, big job. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> the house yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. The drive up is wonderful, the furniture we found is wonderful, but the midges are absolutely awful. They're just like a plague, and I've got them in my ears, I've got them at my nose, I've got them in my mouth, I've eaten them, they've been on the food, they're just everywhere. They're like, they're awful. Oh, there's a fly in here now. You're dead. Ow! And if it comes anywhere near me, you're dead. 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 The following day, Drew and T arrive back at base in North Wales to unload their new stock. We've got to get that fixed. <laughs> we went to Black Clochry House. To describe it as being in the middle of nowhere is probably an understatement, yeah, isn't it? You go yeah. to the middle of nowhere, take a left and drive for 10 miles and you're there. It's literally... You're in yeah. the middle of absolutely nowhere. We found this, which is the biggest sofa known to man. Look at the size of this. The other good point is we found £4,000 in loose change down the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> Three remote controls. <laughs> That's one great big sofa. Room in the middle there for a little one. 
Tea? Go and get somebody. <laughs> hey. Okay. It's an argument so far, isn't it? You could have a big argument, sit at either end and still watch the same programme at the time. True, pass the salt. <laughs> I mean, we do sell big sofas, but that is a gem. A gem of gems. Can we have a cup on, of tea, please, tea? <laughs> yes, I'm taking orders, then. Yeah. I actually see that at but home. But I doubt it because we're really low on stock on sofas at the moment. But it is fab. <laughs> oh, Mills. <laughs> Drew and T are back on the road again. This time they're on their way to the East Midlands. We are going to Northampton. Oh, nice. To see a guy called Mucker. Great name. Yeah, great name. And uh, he's got uh, a barn or farm complex. He doesn't know really what's in there. He's been buying stuff for years as well and throwing it in there. So we could be looking at anything. We could be looking at anything. It just sounds right. I'm Mucker. And I'm Shane. We're in Northampton. Uh, we've been down here in the farm for uh, about 40 years now. Over a 40-year period as a family, we've collected and hoarded a considerable amount. Well, there's all sorts of stuff. Old doors, um, there's loads of stuff all over the place. It'll be nice to see some of the go, really. Hi, Mucker. Yes. How are you doing? Drew. How are you, Drew? Good, all right. nice, to meet you. You. nice to meet you. Where do we start? Well, wherever you want, really. Yeah. Drew and T follow former boxer Mucker and his son Shane into the sizeable warehouse. Come on, dog. <laughs> where they meet Bailey, Mucker's canine companion. Ooh. Oh, there's bits and pieces everywhere, Drew. This is uh, just leather hides. A whole pallet of them there. All pallet. this is leather? This is yeah. all the same as this. We worked out there's about a thousand hides early off. So we're always looking for leather and we buy hides in to fix our upholsterer, Craig. He, he, he gets a good hide in and <laughs> gets a good <laughs> hide in. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and he does, redoes the chairs for us. Leather like that can be used for, obviously, it's upholstery, you know, it can be, but you can, people now make cushions out of it again, there's that. But what I like, uh, people doing leather floors, leather walls in apartments, you know, you can do things like that with it now. And that's I don't know anything about it, apart what from it used to be on an animal, that's it. What would you do with it on that size, though? Well, it's just for, everything's worth something, and there's a lot of it. I'm not sure if this would work. Yeah, that one's knackered, isn't it? You can just feel it's going to tear as soon as you pull it. No, all right, be on round there. Having decided that the leather isn't for him, Drew presses on through the warehouse in the hope of finding some items that are. Hello, Bailey. It's not long before Drew spots something. Unfortunately, they're copies. How do you know they're copies? A, the condition, it would never have survived in that condition, and the quality of them. They're not good enough, and you can see on the back there that it's brand new. I don't do copies, I don't buy anything unless it's original. It's a shame because they're great looking, aren't they? It's a disappointing start. So, in the hope of finding some older items, it's time for Drew to start digging in the darker recesses of the warehouse. Make sure you don't break your neck. Sort of really disorganised the stuff everywhere. I thought, well, there's nothing in here, but just, you know, you've got to go all the way to the back and all the way into the darkest piece. I like the look of this. Can we pull this out? And boom, we found something. That's it. That's what it's about. So, let's have a look. That's cool, isn't it? What do you think of that? I've not seen that. It's cool storage. Kitchen? In dust kitchen, yeah, shop. What we found in there was an open pigeonhole, which should come out of a factory. I really wanted them. I know we can make money on them. I know we're going to sell them. It's an easy sell for us once they're done. So how much do you want for this, then? Scrap price? What are you thinking? I'm thinking, to be honest with you, it is a bit of a manky thing, but I can, I can sell this. I can sell that, believe it or not. Industrial factory furniture like this is popular for its versatility. Once restored, it could command around £250. How does 40 quid grab you? 50 grabs me better. <laughs> 40 really grabs me. 45 would interest me. <laughs> Deal. We'll have that. Go on. Taking that item from factory covered in dirt and rust, cleaning it, and then seeing it in a whole new light is what we do. You take something out of context, you put it somewhere else. Once again, he comes up trumps. He's found, you know, something that's at the back of someone's shed that's been forgotten for years. 
we negotiated. It was uh, haggling over a fiver, which I don't mind doing, and it didn't look like he minded either. Having a little bit of fun bartering over a fiver, it's worth a fiver to me to do it. It's fun, you know. Well, um, we didn't even know this was here, well, so... I'll be honest, everything's <laughs> tucked away, Drew, so... So you didn't know it was there and I gave you 45 quid? <laughs> you did. You were going to give me 40. <laughs> yeah, I was going to. I was happy to give you 40. Shiny things. Featherweight champion. You got any boxes? Is this you? Yours, <laughs> really? Oh, well. Well a bit. Should have given you that when 50 quid, school, shouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't battle with him anymore. <laughs> How much did you say you wanted? <laughs> Windows out here. Armed with the knowledge that his sparring partner is a former boxing champion, Drew follows Mucker into the outbuildings in search of some more salvageable items. One thing I do know a bit about is leaded windows. It's, it's my real job, as I call it. I'm a stained glass restorer by trade, aren't I? So the leaded glass is from the 1920s to 30s period. It's an extremely common pattern, that sort of stylized rose. You'll see it in a million houses. But at the moment, they've just fallen out of favor, and I do have an awful lot of them still. So fortunately, I can't sell it, but you should easily be able to sell that. With only one item in the van, the pressure's on to make the trip to Northampton worthwhile. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's a fantastic bit of table, that is. Look at that, the whole bench, the whole bench. Check it out, look. Instantly, I see this just wonderful, big workbench of a scale and a size and a style I've not seen before. Could you have found anything bigger and heavier? No, nope. that's about as big and heavy as it gets, I think. It's super, super looking, mega cool, and I will have customers crawling out of the woodwork to get hold of this thing. I just love the shape of this. Look at it, it's just great. Look at that folded front on there and fold on there. It's got sort of like an Art Deco desk sort of look to it, but it's industrial. This steel workbench has been custom designed for the workshop. Its originality means it could fetch upwards of £800 in a private sale. Just need to see whether that's been welded on or it's part of the folded top. What sort of money would we be looking at if the back will come off? If that back's been welded on and I can take it off, fine. A couple hundred quid. I'd be happy with a couple hundred quid. It's just whether that's going to work out or not. There's no question he wants it. The question is, can he move it? It's part, it's folded. It's folded, so unfortunately, so there you go. I can't do anything with it. The bench has got a problem. It's folded at the back, and because of the heavy gauge of it and how it's designed, to cut that off, all that's going to do is cost me money. It's going to cost a couple of hundred pounds minimum. And it's hassle and grief, and we don't have the time for that. We need to stop the shop. No shame. Good. Shame. Damn shame. shame. That would have been that would have made a few quid for both of us. It's a hell of a shame because that's a stand out item. It is. Like I soon the second I saw it, I saw it in the shop finished. So then when you see a little problem like that, you go, oh damn it, but you have to learn to walk away. Take it onto the lift. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Drew and T, they were a bit of a double act, a bit like Laurel and Hardy. Okay, Drake, nice to meet you. All in all, it was an enjoyable day. Yeah, uh, and productive. And productive, so yeah. So we've, yeah, we've learnt a lot and uh, we, had a, we had a good time. Well, we're not going to retire off that one. No? To be frank. It wasn't financially worth the journey. It really, it really but, wasn't. We have to buy an awful lot more stuff than that. If I want to make profit, you know, I need to buy a lot more stuff. But hey, I mean, that table. Yeah. So why was that table so special then? Who, who would have had that off you? Uh, there'd, have been a, there'd have been a bun fight for that table. Really? Seriously. So in the antiques world, uh, any serious discussion is, is stopped by a bun fight? <laughs> to the right person, in the right condition, that, that bench could have been worth, you know, £800 or more. So what about to a person in their right mind? <laughs> <laughs> but now, what do you think we should do now? I think now we should go find out someone else who's got some more tat and go look at that. You've got it. <laughs> hey. Hey. Should we go to the pub in the meantime? It's day two of the Midlands trip. Drew and T are on their way to Birmingham, where Drew has been invited to explore the cellars of the Greek Cypriot Community Centre. My name is John Kaloyiro. I'm the vice chairman over here and housing officer. This is the good bit. Uh -huh. It used to be the old GEC electrical building. Ah, uh, so the stroke warehouse. Lots of those light, light fittings you like. So right? we're looking at lighting, potentially. 
And I actually really like Birmingham anyway, and I particularly like Brummies. They are, without doubt, the friendliest people in Britain. Yeah. Aren't they? I agree with you on that one. Do you remember our electrician, Alf? Yeah. Wasn't he like the nicest fella in, on the face of the earth? He was lovely. He was great. The community centre has approached Drew as part of their fundraising effort. It's not the first time this week that Drew's having to negotiate with a non-profit making organisation. Hello. Drew. How are you doing? All the stuff I buy here today, the money's going to go back into the community centre. It, but it's a bit of a crisis of conscience because I have to give the right price to them, I want them to get a good deal out of it, but also I'm in business, I need to make money, so it has to be bought for the right price for me too. John leads Drew and T down into the basement of the community centre to begin their salvage hunt. It's very labyrinthine, oh, isn't it? Oh, my God, it's yet, yet. <laughs> Just massive spiders. <laughs> Are they of any interest to you? <laughs> no. Ah, big opalines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent. When do I want to buy these? These are super, and they've got everything I want. There's a big run of them. Most of them match, they're strange size, and they're undamaged. Perfect. Oh, that's how they go. Really, yeah? Yeah. They're nice, aren't they? Yeah. I'd, I, I'd want to buy all of these, John. The lot. Four, five, six, seven. Man, do I want to buy these? Fourteen of those, see, I can do a whole project with those. Somebody can do a whole restaurant now. But we're missing... A vital element. The hangers to go inside. The gallery. The gallery. Oh, the top. Do you know where they? Do you know where they are? Uh, no. The gallery. It's the piece that clips over that hole at the top, which has the bulb holder in it, and has the loop or hook on the top to have the chain. Oh, please say they've got the galleries. So it's like buying. It's like buying a really good car without the engine. It's sort of. It's all there, but it doesn't go. Frustrating. So would you still be interested without the gallery? The, the, there's a huge price difference. Without the gallery, they're like yeah. a tenner. Right. With, With the, the gallery, gallery. changed it completely. I would rather spend more money, a lot more money, for that many lights complete, all with galleries, because it takes a huge headache away from me, and people love original. I can get galleries for these, but they're reproduction, I'm not sure and they're yet. not as good. They're just not as good. Oh, just a run of ten of those. Imagine those in a restaurant with just a big line like that all the way down. The census chairman, Vass, drops in to see how things are going. And despite his confirmation that the galleries can't be found, Drew's still interested in pursuing a sale. Once restored with galleries to full working order, these opalines could fetch upwards of £160, depending on the size. I can, for this lot, as a pile, I'm just taking up a chance, really. So I can give you... Really, just one price. Right. Although it's just got to walk away from them. They, they can't do anything else with them. Okay. £150 for the lot. For the lot. For the lot. That's it. I'll take a chance on them. Otherwise, I'll just have to leave them. Yeah. So if you guys are done, it's up to you guys. Well, look, I think ultimately they've been sitting there gathering dust for a number of years. So yeah. That's I think opinion. £150 is reasonable. I'll be that. Yeah. Okay. That's deal. Thank you very Thank much. You. Okay. Cool. Right. It's not a perfect deal, but a good start. And Drew, T, and John delve that. deeper into the cellars in pursuit of more hidden gems. You've got a hat on, though, Drew. Oh, man. with a hat, go first. Normally it's me that gets dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You all right, Drew? I've learned over the years, rooms like that, you have to go all the way to the back because the first thing to go in there was important. They cleaned the room out, they put something in there. How is your rat problem? There's a massive rat in the middle of the room. <laughs> <laughs> a rat in the hat, you might say. <laughs> Am I helping? No. I went all the way to the back of the room, covered in muck, absolutely covered in it. Uh, T stood there doing nothing, shining the torch. Have a good look, there's nothing there, nothing at all. Yeah, it's your turn next. <laughs> Is the next room really clean with no spiders? <laughs> I doubt it. The filthy room has yielded nothing. But there are ever more corridors and rooms for Drew and T to investigate. Uh oh. Hey, look at these metal letters. These would have been all neons. And, true to his word, Drew manages to find an even filthier space for T to explore. 
OK, T, can you dive in here? My knee's knackered. If you get in there and start passing them out to me. Drew found the dirtiest, filthiest, most difficult to get to place uh, and found some things he wanted in there. Sorry, mate. It is properly right. dirty. No and way. that shelf's not the best. Go on, then. Of course, Muggins here. Had to go in and get them. Loads of letters in here. Fantastic. See, find as many as you can. I think that's all of them. Oh, right, I'm coming out. Yeah. Where's the chip? That's it. Down a bit more. Drop. You're there. You know, all those rich people pay for a rebirthing. Yeah. <laughs> Just climb in and out of there. <laughs> it's done me a world of good. Look what you found. And that, don't drop them. That one's not worth anything anymore. <laughs> These metal letters have been salvaged from the original General Electric sign. They could sell for approximately £45 each. So we need to talk money, John. Let's say, um, how about £10 a pop on these? £130 for these. And all these other bits and bobs, can we say these are sort of 30 quid for, the, for, for the what's left of these? £160 for the box. Can you round it up to £100? Quid? It's for a good, for a good cause. For a good cause. It's for a good cause. Am I being mean? Your donations here. Good cause. No, do you want me take to it out of your side? wages. I'll take it out of my wages. Right, yeah, that's fine, yeah. <laughs> Two hundred quid. Yeah. Lovely. Jeez. Thanks, John. You'll sleep well tonight. I haven't done your bit for charity. <laughs> it's not for charity. It's <laughs> for the kids. Not. Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's get them in. I think I paid too much. Fairly sure I paid too much. Okay. All right. But okay. it's going to a good cause. I will be able to get my money back, worst case scenario. So, but everyone's a winner, really, with those. We carry on, and there's God knows how many rooms here, hallways and passages. Go into the next one, straight away a spot this cupboard. John. Yes. I like this. What was this used for? But what I spotted first were these really good sort of tea handles that are coming out of it, and great big bolts, and really just mega thick, chunky engineering and construction on this cupboard. So when, when was the building built? Approximately about 1920s. That 1930s. About 1930s. Yeah, this the, is 1930s, from that era, looking yeah, at it. Yeah. Cool old paint scheme. All the handles are there. Instantly, bang, no I want it. It's got everything I want. Is this something that, that, you, that you could sell, John? Yeah, definitely, yeah. This early 20th century handmade engineer's <laughs> cupboard, engineer. a survivor from the original General Electric Company, could net around £750 once restored. But can Drew make an offer which will satisfy John without making an inflated donation to the charity? It's probably worth 70, 80 quid in scrap alone, because just for the weight of it. Um, so if I said if I gave you £50 on top of that, so 100 and, let's go 130. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 130 is fine, yeah, isn't it? Fine, I think fine. that's fair. Yeah, I'll take a chance on it on that. I've got a bit of work, yes. but I just love it. Absolutely love it. Nice one. Yeah, Thanks, John. Nice one. This is not the easiest thing in the world to sell, but when this is finished, the right house, that is going to look special. Right, so we've got to get yeah. this out. If there's any yeah. other big heavy things, don't show them to him. Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> I guess he'll buy them. I'm me carry Love it. That is what we're good at. We do it all the time. Finding something like that, that most people would walk past, but that will make a project, that will make a room, it will make a shop or an office, because it's totally different. Ooh. Oh. It's the thing, really, that makes the day for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. That's a fair bit of weight on that. Take me, John. OK. Yeah. Some Abilines. Abilines. I'll start packing them in. Cheers, John. And very pleased it's going to a good course to the Cypriot Community Centre. Anyway. Wonderful. Yeah. Done. Off we go. Home. With a van full of... Stock. Hey. I have to say, weren't they nice fellas? Yeah, and your 40 quid will go towards their hard work. I thought work. you donated that. No, it's coming out of your wages, not mine. I don't get wages. Do you not? No. It just goes straight into the, 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 the bucket of money for children. Ah. Uh, that was proper digging around today. It was. You enjoyed it? You could see your little face Brilliant. beaming through all the dust. I would be quite happy doing it, even if I didn't find anything. That was great. There's a saying about pigs being at home in something, and you were that today. <laughs> I was. I do like doing that. 
a good pile of salvage and a decent donation to charity had made for a very satisfactory trip to Birmingham. Drew and T head back to North Wales to unload their haul. Great to see you come back with so much stock. We've got loads and loads and loads of stock on here. One, two, go. It's going to fall off. All right, ready? Down, no. feet. What do you think? I think definitely a gun cupboard, a really trendy gun cupboard. It's not a bad idea, actually. No. Right, got loads of these. The good news is there's 14 of these. 14, just now a, you can get a one off. Mm. One oh. less now for you. One less. Oh. <laughs> How many did you say we had? Uh, it's just 13 now. 13, 13 now. now. Should we do a recount? <laughs> so that had survived for 80 years? 80 years. Two minutes in my hands. Handmade. It's like putty in my hands, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Useless. No, don't break them. Careful. Drew's done really well this week. Um, he's come back very happy with a van full of items. He's just over the moon. Metal letters, plastic in us, you can light them from behind. We're not exactly, it definitely said GEC. You can yeah. see those, right? GB. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to pay the right price for them, and then somebody persuaded me to give the rest of the money to charity. It's all run by volunteers who give their time for free, and he was quibbling over a couple of quid. 40. Pounds. Well, that's not like you. No, that, that's, like that's nearly a week's wage for me. <laughs> <laughs> Until that lamp, it was. Yeah. It was about ten. Just clean and polish them and hang them on the wall and okay. somebody can take them away. So what I want to do with this, Gav, is burnish the exterior of it, polish the interior. That's it. Don't do any more to it. Get that one finished um, in the shop as soon as possible. Handyman John gets to work cleaning the letters and the opalines. We got all the dusty jobs anyway. While Restorer Gavin is working his magic on the engineer's cupboard. You can see the difference on the end. It's quite, quite satisfying, to be honest. After a polish, a burnish and a spray paint, the engineer's cupboard is ready for display in the showroom. Done. This week was right up there on the unusual side of things. We did it all. Fairgrounds, country houses, hoarders, you name it, we've been there. We managed to buy stock and we were in a beautiful part of the country doing it. So no complaints from me and we look forward to next week, see what comes our way. Could be that big. Could be that big, could be that big. I need scale, so we need our little scale monkey. Hands up! Sit there, stay, stay, good boy, stay, look cute, look cute, stay. Looking good, Enzo. Just have to see what happens with these. We'll put them on the website and just go with it.